Wine is one of God's choicest gifts to man and its history is almost a romance. Of all the alcoholic beverages, wine is regarded as the most complex and interesting subject of study. This is so because each country and region uses different types of grapes for wine production, implements its own labeling laws, follows own quality control, has different manufacturing processes, wine evaluation methods, storage methods, follow different service procedures for different types of wines etc. In this session, we will discuss what is expected from the food and beverage service staff. By the end of the session, you will be able to define and classify wines, know the constituents of grapes, you will be able to name main grape varieties, you will be able to list the factors influencing the character of wine, understand wine faults, evaluate wine, and understand how the wines are named. Wine is the alcoholic beverage obtained from the fermentation of the juice of freshly gathered grapes. The fermentation takes place in the district of origin according to local tradition and practice. Of a relatively small area of the world is wine producing. This is because the grape will only produce juice of the quality necessary for conversion into a drinkable wine wherein two types of climatic conditions prevail. Sufficient sun to ripen the grape and winters that are moderate yet sufficiently cool to give the wine a chance to rest and restore its strength for the growing and fruiting seasons. These climatic conditions are found in two main wine producing zones which lie between the latitudes 30 degrees and 50 degrees north of the equator and 30 degrees and 50 degrees south of the equator. Three quarters of the world's wine is produced in Europe and just under half in the European Union. France and Italy produce the most wine with Italy being the largest producer. The color, flavor and aroma of the wine are largely influenced by the type of the grape that is used in the production. Wine is classified on the basis of its color, its taste and the contents. According to the color, wine is classified as white wine, red wine, rosé wine and blush wines. White wine color ranges from pale straw with a green tinge to dark gold. It is produced from both white and black grapes. If produced from black grapes, the skin of the grapes must be removed soon after crushing to prevent the must taking on the color from the pigments present in the skin. For red wines, the color ranges from purple when young to brick red as it ages. It is produced from red grapes. The skin is allowed to remain with the fermenting must either throughout the process or halfway through. The coloring pigments present in the skin gives color to the wine. Rosé wine is a light pink in color which is produced from the mixture of white and red grapes or only from red grapes. The skin of the black grapes is allowed to remain in contact with the must till the required tinge is obtained. It takes about 24 to 36 hours depending on the intensity of rose color required. Once the required color is obtained, the skin is removed. It is legally permitted in some countries to blend small quantities of red with white wine. Blush wines is the new style of rosé wines developed in California. Skins of black grapes are allowed to macerate with the must for a very short period which produces a very light pink colored wine. Wine can also be classified according to the taste. According to the taste, wine is classified into dry, medium and sweet wines. 
dry wines are produced when all the sugar is converted to alcohol. Sweet wine is obtained when there is some sugar left after fermentation that is stopped naturally or intentionally by the manufacturer. Whereas medium wines are neither too dry nor too sweet. It has traces of sugar left after the fermentation. According to the content, wine is classified as still wines, sparkling wines, fortified wines, aromatized wines and tonic wines. Still wine is a kind of wine obtained by the natural fermentation process without adding anything else. The carbon dioxide produced during fermentation is allowed to escape. This type of wine is also termed as table wine. The alcoholic content is 10 to 14 percent. Cabernet Sauvignon is one of the most popular table wines. Sparkling wines are wines bottled with the carbon dioxide produced during fermentation. The gas is prevented from escaping. The trapped gas is a result of secondary fermentation either in the bottle or in a sealed tank. Some manufacturers impregnate the wine with the gas. It gives efflorescence or sparkle to the wine. The alcoholic percentage is between 10 and 13 percent. The glasses used for sparkling wine must be thick to withstand the pressure of the gas behind the cork. Champagne is an example of this kind of wine. The alcoholic strength of fortified wine is increased with the addition of brandy either during or at the end of the fermentation. The alcohol strength of fortified wines range from 16 to 22 percent alcohol by volume. This type of wine is also termed as heavy wine. Examples are sherry, port, madeira and masala. Aromatized wines are wines that are fortified and aromatized with herbs, barks, spices, roots, etc. The alcoholic content is 14 to 20 percent. Vermouth is the most popular aromatized wine. The following are the constituents of grapes and each contributes to wine making. The stalk, the skin, the pulp and pips. The color of the wine is derived from the substances contained in the skins of the grape. Yellow pigments are contained in both light and dark grapes whereas red pigments only in red grapes. The skins also contain tannins and yeast. The monocellular fungi is responsible for the fermentation of grape juice. The stalks hold grapes in a bunch. It weighs around 3 to 7 percent of the total weight of the harvest depending on the type of wine. Stalks contain tannins which are soluble in alcohol. Tannins contribute the astringency, the keeping quality and helps in coagulation with thinning agent containing protein that is used during clarification process. The pulp is a soft substance behind the skin of the grapes which contain liquid, sugar and acids such as tartaric, malic and citric acids. It amounts to 80-85% to of the weight of the bunch. During the fermentation process, these acids interact with alcohol and produce esters which provide bouquet to the wine. Other than these acids, the pulp also has other minerals which influence the taste and character of the wine. The water content of the pulp is about 80% percent 
and the sugar is between 10 and 25 percent and the rest is acids. This composition depends on the variety of the grapes and the climatic condition. The pips are small seeds of grapes. They contain both tannins and oils. They give an unpleasantly bitter flavor to the wine and are discarded during winemaking. The wine species that produce grapes suitable for wine production and which stocks most of the vineyards of the world is named Vitis vinifera. Most varieties now planted in Europe and elsewhere have evolved from this species to cross breeding to suit local soils and climates. The same grape in different regions may have a different name. There are a number of grapes that have become known as having distinctive characteristics. Some of the examples of white grapes are Chardonnay, Riesling, Sauvignon Blanc, Semillon, Chenin Blanc. And examples of black grapes are Cabernet Sauvignon, Pinot Noir, Merlot, Shiraz, Barbera, Brunello, Cabernet Franc, Gamay, Nebbiolo, etc. The characteristic of a type of grape vary from vineyard to vineyard and country to country, depending on the nature of soil and the climate in which it grows. The sugar content, yeast and acid levels of grapes greatly influence the character of wines. The character of the wine largely depends on some of these factors. The soil. The mineral content of the soil and the groundwater determines the composition of acids and other trace minerals which influence the aroma of the wine. Each grape variety has a distinct aroma and other features which play an important role in determining the kind of wine to be produced. The characteristics of wines produced from well-known grapes will be discussed later. The climate can be a blessing or curse for the grapes. Extremes of sunshine, hailstorm, wind, frost, rain etc can damage the grapes. The average yearly temperature of the place should not be below 10 degrees Celsius. The ideal average temperature is around 14 degrees Celsius. Most wine producing countries lie between 30 and 50 degree latitude. The countries near the 30 degree latitude have higher temperature which accelerates the fermentation process, producing poor quality wine. The countries near 50 degree latitude produce better wines. Aspect Vineyards on the slopes of valley are normally preferred as the frost will roll down. The slopes facing south normally produce good quality wines due to longer exposure to sunshine compared to north facing slopes as they do not have the same advantage. Viticulture is the most important and in every stage of viticulture which includes the ploughing, pruning, weeding, spraying, harvesting etc. happen at a particular month of the year considering the weather. Any delay in the schedule will influence the character of the wine. For example, late harvest wine grapes have more sugar content which determines the character of the wine. Vinification refers to the method of making wine. The wine producers had a lot of options 
before them at each stage of making wine. Options on the method of pressing, fermentation containers, temperature control, the type of wood for aging, the duration of aging, blending etc are some of them. The decisions taken influence the character of wine. Aging determines the character of the wine. The longer the wine matured, the mellower and smoother will be the wine, taking the flavor of mandolin from the wood. Wine should be stored at appropriate temperatures and in the rooms free from direct sun, light and vibration. Wines should not be subjected to extreme fluctuation of temperature. Poor storage would mar the character of the wine. Lastly, bottles should be transported and handled carefully during the transit. Efforts are taken by everyone who handles wine to preserve its aroma, profile and taste. But unfortunately, some of the wines acquire faulty characteristics due to many reasons. A good winemaker will identify them in the winery itself and take corrective measures. Some of the common faults and the reason for them will be discussed here. During the fermentation process, sulfur dioxide is added to check the action of wild yeast. It also acts as a preservative. Addition of too much of it leaves an unpleasant smell which resembles the smell of a burnt matchstick on the wine. However, it normally disappears when exposed to air, either by decanting the wine or swirling in the glass. During the aging process, the air invades the wine through a very fine pores of the wood and the alcohol interacts with the oxygen. When exposed to oxygen for a long period of time, especially white wine assumes a brownish color. The wines, both red and white, acquire the aroma of sherry. It may also go lifeless with dull and a flat smell. Cocked or cock. Wine bottles are closed with cock to retain the characteristics and to preserve the quality and quantity of the content. During storing, the wine bottles are stored horizontally to prevent the cork from drying out. When stored horizontally, the cork comes in contact with the wine, swells and does not allow the air to go in. The cork that is contaminated with a strong moldy smell by a substance called tripe Chloralisol or PCA during the sterilization process spoils the wine during the contact. The wine takes on the smell of the faulty cork. This should be returned to the supplier. However, it should not be confused with the wine with pieces of cork that may have been fallen while opening the bottle. This can be removed during decanting process. Wine turns vinegar when it is exposed to oxygen for long duration and also by the activities of Acetobacter bacteria if unchecked, which acts on alcohol and converts the wine to vinegar. If a guest complains of this, replace the wine. Wine smelling of hydrogen sulfide, similar to rotten egg. The wine takes on the smell of rotten eggs when the yeast reacts with sulfur dioxide during the fermentation. However, this fades away when the wine is decanted. This occurs mainly in a red wine. Sometimes there may be formation of potassium bitartrate crystals on the cork in the wine which may spoil the appearance of the wine. However, the crystals which are also called Wine diamonds 
can be retained in the bottle by pouring the wine gently into the glass. It is commonly found in German wines. Sometimes wine may be contaminated by foreign materials such as splintered glass due to faulty bottling equipment. Wines throw up sediments during aging which can be removed by racking or by decanting. Most of the wine names that you find in your wine shop or on the restaurant wine list are named in one of the four basic ways. They may be named after the grape variety used, after the place of origin, by the brand name or by the generic names. Some wines, especially the one produced in Germany, Australia, the US, the Alsace region of France, are named after the predominant grape variety used in winemaking. Chardonnay, Cabernet Sauvignon, Riesling, Slivanir, Zinfandel are some of the examples. The minimum amount of grape variety mentioned on the label used in the production varies from region to region and country to country depending on the wine law of that place. In most of the European countries, a minimum of 85% of the wine must come from the grapes mentioned on the label. In the US, it is 75% and in some regions in France, it is 100%. These wines have the characteristics of the predominant grape variety used in the production. Wines named after the grape variety are called as varietal wines. The quality wines are generally named after their place of origin, which may be large such as a region and district, to smaller such as communes, village, vineyards, etc. Unlike American wines, most European wines are named for the region where their grapes grow rather than from the grape variety itself. Many of these European wines come from precisely the same grape varieties as American wines, but they don't say so on the label. Instead, the labels say Burgundy, Bordeaux and so on, the places where those grapes grow. But why name a wine after a place? Depending on the type of soil, the amount of sunshine, the amount of rain, the slope on the hill and many other characteristics that each somewhere has, the grape will turn out differently. If the grapes are different, the wine is different. Each wine therefore reflects the place where its grape grow. Examples are Pauliac, Chateauneuf of the Pub, Visuelle, etc. The label also has a phrase mentioning controlled name of origin. Wines can be named by a brand name. Some wines are named after the producer, shipper or the proprietor of the vineyard who tries to establish his or her brand by producing quality wines according to his or her style. Most of the time, the reputation of the producer is the basis for the choice. Some countries name their wine after well-known wine districts that are noted for its typical style of wine. The wine so named may or may not have any resemblance to the wine of those regions, for example Burgundy and Chablis. These wines must have the place of origin on the label, for example California Chablis. This clearly informs the consumer that the wines are made in California and it is different from the Chablis of France. Most generic wines are inexpensive and affordable wines for many consumers. Wine is an alcoholic beverage obtained from fermented grape juice, having the alcoholic content usually between 10 and 14 percent. 
It is divided into various types according to its color, taste and content. Wine gets its color mainly from the coloring pigments present in the skin and during the aging process to some extent. Wines get the sparkle or efflorescence from the carbon dioxide gas that is given out during fermentation which is absorbed by the wine. These wines are termed as sparkling wines. The alcoholic content of some wines are enhanced up to 22% with the addition of grape spirits such as brandy and these wines are termed as fortified wines or heavy wines. Some fortified wines are aromatized with herbs, bark, spices, roots etc. and those wines are called aromatized wines. Vermouth is the most popular aromatized wine. The character of the wine is greatly influenced by the type of grape used in the production, the soil, the climate, the viticulture, vinification process, aging etc. A good wine must have the aroma of the grape and should be clear and well balanced. A sommelier should evaluate the color, clarity, aroma and taste of wine before the service so as to be sure of the quality of the wine being suggested and served to the guest. Wines are named after the place, grapes, manufacturer's name or style and the sommelier should be able to understand the name of the wine and be familiar with some of the terms associated with the characteristics of the wine.